I've had a request from a subscriber if I could do a video about repositioning. But please remember when doing repositioning you must ensure the trump beds are level so that the head can clamp the sheet securely. And before I start I'd like you to know if you subscribe you'll get access to all the materials needed to practice anything I've done in this video. And please give me the thumbs up if you like the content. So here we go. This is a training video about True Tops repositioning. So I'm going to use two jobs for this. The first job is A0048272. Which is our so I'll locate that. And I'll place this outside the sheet. Right, so if we go to, well, as, you, as you can see, this is quite a large job. And if we try to nest this on a normal two by one sheet, you'd only get two of these on there. Even if we've done this manually and try to put one in between the clamps, it'd break through the bottom of the sheet. Which is no good, so we delete all of these. We need to delete that one. And this time, I feel like I could create single. This time, I'll change the bottom to 25 and turn on optimum utilization. And as you can see, we now have free on the sheet. So I'll delete that one on the outside of the sheet. And just to make this a bit more stable I'm gonna modify the web width for you do and just move this along about five mil. Right, so I'm gonna turn on the tools just to see. So now the tool doing the outside profile has a compulsory sequence on and which is if I activate that and see what it is, it's 5 by 50 which is no good on this job because it's using a manual stop and uh, we're going to need to change that for something like Special 5 which will strengthen the sheet and hold the components in place. Before I do that I'm going to actually move the clamps. So normally in repositioning you'd have the clamps on 5 and 13. Is This is just um, so you can the actual clamps can move on the sheet. But if you look in there, it's this is affecting a lot of tools. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve affected there. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, so what we're going to do, I think, if I go to the clamps, clamps again, I'm going to move that, put it back to 14, move that onto number 6. So that's cut down quite a bit. But it's still, we can still get that even better. So if I go to loading, modify position, do minus 30. So I looked at it, it's got it away from that side. Oops, undo that. It's got it away, if I, I'll do that again, My modify minus 30. So it's got it away from that side, which is good, but it's now hitting another tool, which I know it's an 8mm diameter, which is part of a multi tool, so that can't even break into the area of the clamps without it erroring out. So 
do the modifier position and this time I'll put in minus 20 which is perfect it's in between that job and it's not hit on there so I'll OK that go to total and you look at the other end it's free from hitting anywhere so that's that's really good um, I'm going to put some constructions aligning. I'll explain a bit later why I've done this. But I'll just do it for now before I forget. Right. So the clamps have been moved. I'll explain about the uh, construction lines in a bit. So what we're going to do now is go on to single part. You can click on any one of these three and as I said um, anything that goes in the clamp area is going to be affected and with repositioning you can't have compulsory sequences in that are going through the clamp area so normally we'd have to with a compulsory sequence we'd have to dissolve that but if I, de I dissolve that now, I've got to take the 5x50 out, I'll have to individually delete all of these tools. So I'm going to undo that and delete, because I want to take the 5x50 out and put in a special 5, I'll delete the 5x50 and because it's part of a compulsory sequence, it'll take them all out in one go, as you can see. So now I'm going to get Go to punch in, pick up a special five, punch processing at element. I want to put these in manually. Just go round the profile. It's thrown up an area there, I'll come back to that in a sec. I'll just finish that one off. The reason it threw up an area is it's cut through that part, which we didn't want. So if I go to modify overlapping minus one, I'll just move move that so it's not causing a problem. And it's not broke through that just that part of material. Alright, so that's done. So now I want to go to process optimization, generate micro joint. It's already on point one, so that'll do. I'm going to put probably more than I need of tags on this component just to hold it in safely. As I said, through the, the actual gap at the top and the bottom is very narrow in the sides, so I'm going to tag it virtually virtually all over probably do a couple of tags here just one on now so that's it so now we come out of the single part mode and the reason why I said you can go on to any one of these parts that are in there because this will affect whatever that red dot is placed on so it's got all parts on sheet. So whatever changes I've made to this one will change on the others. So it's all parts on sheet selected. OK that. So now all of them have been done. So now I'm going to go to get the other part. I'll open that up. This one is A004. 885 which is that one so place that outside the sheet go back to nesting create sectional okay that and I'll put one in the X two in the Y and just move that to the end I'll turn on machining so you can see 
I'll just get rid of the one on the outside of the sheet. Um, I'm going to move that down slightly just to make it a little bit more stable again. I'll leave that 33 and I'll just move that down a bit. I'll try minus 15. That looks a bit better. So now this is all done. Now we're going to go to optimization, start, continue, OK that. Continue again, sort the tools, sort in size, rearrange after, and we're just going to move these about. I'll move these, sorry, I'll move these about so they're part of the same multi tool, make the job a bit quicker. Um, oops. Right, so that should be about it. Right, so I'll OK that. Right, so now we want to go into repositioning. So it's interactive starts. You see this yellow circular dot appears. So normally if we had the clamps on 5 and 13, we'd put that in number 9. Well, it's central position, but because the clamps are 6 and 14, we're going to place that on number 10. OK that. So now, this is where the repositioning of the clamps go. So, you're going to move this manually and just use do it by eye. So you don't want it sort of going in, cutting into that circular part. So you do it just before that. So, that do roughly. I'll OK that and see now all the machining on the parts have turned dark blue. So I'm going to click on to rearrange processing and this is why I put these construction lines in here. So we can see what tools are affected. So I can see it's that tool, that tool, that tool, that tool and that tool. So I'll OK that. And now we just delete, go on to delete processings and take them out. So I go to total and that's done. <coughs> so that's, if we look at um, select via number, if you hold that down, two numbers are appear. One is before repositioning. Oops. If you hold it down again, two is after repositioning. So that's just showing you where they've moved. So now we want to go into single part mode and select the central part that's affected by the clamps. And now all we do is put the tools back in. So because we're putting these back in we want to do it the way the smaller tools first, so we're going to select the special 8 first, punch processing, create an element, zoom in there a bit, put it on there, it says not no suitable cutting edge found, please put down tool and identify cutting edge, so I'll OK that, so the cutting edge on that is there, so as soon as I select that it should jump on the job, and there it just do that automatically. Now I'll go to the 5 by 25 which is doing, it's the second smallest tool at element power and now I want the special 5 so I'll OK that at element again now for the last part do it there I'll go to process optimization because taking that tool out, I've deleted the tags. Uh, generate micro joint, and I'll put the two tags in. And this time, when we come out of single part mode, instead of doing that to all parts on the sheet, you only want it on the current part. OK, so 
now if we check this out in simulation it's to start going through the tool so I'll just get it on to the, the main tool which is the special five so I'll go through all these tools it's using so here we come come up to the special five now so I'll just do that singly so this is the route it's taking because we've not put a compulsory sequence in it's doing its own thing see it's jumped past that bit there which it should do Now we go on to these two parts. And after it's done that one, it should reposition and go on to the parts of the tool in we just done now. So here we go. Now do the special eights first. One, two, then the five by twenty-five. One, two, and then the special five, which it has done. And this is the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching.